Hello, I'm Dr. Greg Poland. I'm a professor of medicine here at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, and I direct the Mayo Vaccine Research Group. This September, I've published a paper in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings entitled MMR Vaccine and Autism, Vaccine Nihilism, and Postmodern Science. The reason that I wrote this uh, particular commentary was to try to address to the world, but really my colleagues, and now through this video, you, the average listener, what science is there regarding all that you hear about MMR and autism? Well, we go back well over a decade to 1998 when a physician in Britain named Dr. Andrew Wakefield published a paper in an influential journal called The Lancet where he proposed that MMR vaccine was somehow associated with and perhaps causative of autism. Independent bodies have investigated Dr. Wakefield. They have taken his medical license from him. The British Medical Council declared his work fraudulent, um, and yet it has caused these great, great public health harms across multiple uh, nations. And we really need to address that, and we need to reassure and educate the public, our patients, other providers, and the media. As you might imagine, this generated immense debate and controversy, concern that pe people had well, if I give this vaccine to my child, are we going to cause autism in, in sort of a simplistic way of stating it? Appropriately so, once that hypothesis was raised, many, many studies were done, all of them showing that there was no connection. Once that happened, then people said, well, maybe it's not M measles vaccine, maybe it's MMR, the combination of measles, mumps, rubella. When that was disproven, well, maybe it's thimerosal, the mercury-containing preservative that was in the vaccine. And that's been disproven. So there have been well over 20 studies done across two decades in multiple geographic locations and countries, all with the same conclusion. There is no scientific evidence of a connection between autism spectrum disorders and MMR vaccine. The problem is that there are many uh, celebrities and non-scientists who continue to push this connection and a media anxious to embrace controversial topics probably in order to cr increase interest in, in their particular story. This has caused an additional problem. Because of this controversy, many parents in the U.S., in Western European countries, particularly England and other, where, other places, have decided not to immunize their children with MMR vaccine because of this fear of autism. So what that has engendered is a rising proportion of the population who have not immunized their children. That is, they are susceptible to this virus. And it's worth making a very important point here. Measles is the most contagious infectious disease of humans that we know of. Even with modern medical care, about three out of every thousand children who contract measles will go on to die as a result of that. Many more will be injured as a result of that. So we now have outbreaks in the U.S. and in Europe of a disease that we had previously controlled. We had eliminated measles in the United States, indigenous measles, meaning cases that arose from citizens of the U.S. We had eliminated that in the U.S. and the plan was to eradicate it much as smallpox has been eradicated and no longer poses a threat to us. So whereas we had way less than 50 cases a year all through the 2000s, this year already, and I'm speaking in uh, early August, this year already we've had over 150 cases in the U.S. documented, probably many cases that we have not yet documented. That's a three-fold rise, so we're well on our way to a historic record number of measles cases in this era of, of containment and of elimination. So clearly, not giving the vaccine has, have a, has had a devastating public health effect on individuals and on communities. How are we going to resolve the debate? And how are, perhaps if you're a parent listening, how are you going to make a decision? And I think to, to try to make it simple, 
um, we have two choices. We can follow science and the evidence, or we can follow our emotion and what's been called postmodern science. That is a kind of relativism where anybody's viewpoint, no matter how outrageous, no matter how unscientifically based, is equally valid. So what do we need to do instead? Well, I think we need to educate the public about the method of science and how we know what we know. I think one of the most important things, and this is something that grieves me as a physician, we spend so much time and energy and limited research funds on trying to repeatedly do studies to show whether there is or is not a connection between the vaccine and autism. And as, as I've said, well over 20 studies have shown no connection. No study has shown a connection. That we are wasting our funds. Why not apply this money to new hypotheses about what the cause of autism is? You know, the current estimate is that somewhere around one out of every 110 to 30 uh, to 130 kids that are born in the U.S. now have evidence of autism. But the tragedy is that we are not helping those individuals by shunting all of the research money into a hypothesis that has been repeatedly disproven and refusing to entertain other hypotheses as to what the cause of autism um, could be. And I think that that is truly a shame.